In Power Query, we need to control column names carefully to ensure we don't get errors when column names change. Yeah, one of those. So renaming columns becomes really important. We can either rename columns based on their original column name or based on position. But what happens if we can't guarantee the column name or the position? Well, don't lose hope because there's a way. And that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. If we have consistent column names, we can change them to anything we like and there's no big issue. Here we have a table with columns for item, region and sales. And let's suggest that we want sales to be called value. All we have to do is double click on the column header name and we'll enter value. And that's it. We've now renamed our column. So if the next step were to detect the data types, we could select all of those, go to transform, detect data type. And even though value is hard coded into our M code, that will work because our sales column is always renamed to value. But what if a column name isn't consistent? In that scenario, we have to rename a column based on its position. Here we have a table with columns for item, region and sales December 2025. Now when we get the next version of this file, it will be item, region and sales January 2026. So what happens if we try the same approach? We're going to double click to rename. We'll call that value. That now hard codes our column name into our M code. If we then apply the data type, it will apply that to the item, region and value columns. But what happens if our source data changes? I'm going to simulate that by clicking on the gear icon where it references December 2025. I'm going to change that to January 2026. I'll then click OK. The problem is when we come to our rename column step, as you can see, we now have an error because the sales December 2025 doesn't exist. Now we know from our source step that the problem column is the third column. Therefore, we can rename based on position. Let's come to our renamed column step and we're not going to hard code our column name. Instead, we're going to use table dot column names. This function returns the column names as a list. So if we get our previous step name, which is source, that will then list out each of those column names of item, region and sales December 2025. We only want the third value from that list. Now Power Query is zero based, which means the first item in a list is zero. So if you want the third item from a list, in curly brackets, we enter two, and that will always reference that third column. When we commit that, the rename happens correctly. You can see we have our value. And when we come to change type, everything works as we expect. So as long as we have a consistent column position, we can rename our column based on that position. But what if the column names in the input can change position? Let's suggest that different people in the team have different presets. And when they download the report, it can include extra columns. Therefore, we don't know the position of that column. Well, in that scenario, provided there is some logic about how the column names are constructed, we can use logic to rename the columns. Here we have a table and there are columns for item, region, size, and sales December 2025. Let's suggest that sometimes the size column is there and sometimes it isn't. Therefore, we don't know where our sales column will be. However, our sales column always starts with the word sales. So let's generate some logic. I'm going to click on the FX icon to create a new step. Now we know that we can use table.column names and then we can use the name of our table, which is source. And when we commit that, we just get a list of those column names. 
Now we want to filter so we only get the item that starts with the word sales. To do that, at the start of our formula, we're going to add the list.select function. We can see there, this returns a list of values that match the condition. The list is the first argument. That is our table column names. Then we have our function. What we want to do is to check whether each value starts with the word sales. Because we want to apply this to each value, we're going to use the each keyword. And then we can apply our function, text dot starts with, open your bracket. Now, depending on the structure of your column names, you will need to apply different functions so that it works for your scenario. In this situation, text dot starts with is exactly what we need. This indicates whether the text starts with a specified value. The first argument is text. Now, because we're working with the each keyword, our text is going to be each item in our list. Therefore, we can represent text with the underscore character. The next argument is substring. What text do we want to find? We want to find the value of sales. We can then close that bracket at the end. When we commit that, it only returns the one value that starts with sales. This is currently a list which contains a single value. We want to return this as a value. As we mentioned earlier, Power Query is zero based. Therefore, to return the first item from a list, in curly brackets, we enter zero. And now when we commit that, we get the single value that we want to rename. I'm now going to select all of this and press Control C to copy. I'll come across to the Applied Steps window and delete that step. And now we can perform a manual rename. Let's double click on the column header and call this value. We'll now commit that change. In the M code, we can see that our previous column name is hard coded. We can replace this with the logic that we created a few moments ago. I'll now paste that formula. And let's commit that change. Let's now apply the data types that we had before. We had data types for item, region, and value. Then we can come across to transform and select detect data types. Let's come across and test this to see what happens if our column name changes. I'll click on the gear icon and then we can edit our table. Rather than sales December 2025, we want this to be Jan 2026. I'll then click OK. When we come to the next step in our Applied Steps window, everything works. And when we come to the Change Type step, everything still works. That's how we can handle the situation where we don't know a column's name and we don't know its position, but we do know that there's logic in naming that column. The last scenario we're looking at is where we don't know the column name, we don't know the position, and we don't know if there's any logic in the name of that column. How can we handle that? Here we have a table that contains columns for item, region, size, and sales for December 2025. And let's suggest that sometimes we have the size column and sometimes we don't. Also, sometimes your colleagues in Italy send you the file. Therefore, you don't get sales December 2025. Instead, you get that in Italian, which means you can't guarantee what that column name is going to be at all. In that scenario, we can create a rename table. Here we have a query that has two columns, old name and new name. The old name column includes all of the variations that we might have for our column name. And over time, we can build up a list of more and more items. Our new name column includes the name that we want to call that column. Now, because this is just a normal table, it could come from anywhere. We can have a list of these old names and new names inside an Excel table that we then load into Power Query. Or in this scenario, we have a manual table built into Power Query itself. And there you can see our table of old and new values. Let me click cancel to close that. For this scenario, 
we are going to use the table dot two rows function. I'll click on the FX icon to create a new step. And in there, we can use table dot two rows open bracket. There we can see that this creates a list of nested lists of row values from a table. It only has a single argument, which is the table name. And we're going to apply this based on our source table. I'll then close the bracket at the end and commit that. We now have a list of lists. If I select in the white space of any one of those lists, it contains a pair of values, the old name and the new name. And this is exactly what we provide when we rename columns. So that means we can use this table dot two rows function. That was just to illustrate what the function does. We don't need that anymore, so we can delete that step. Now let's come back to our query and we're going to manually rename our column. And I'll call that value. That now hard codes that column name into the M code. And now we can replace everything within the double curly brackets. We're going to use table dot two rows, opening bracket. And this time our table is based on our renames query. Now, unfortunately, as soon as we commit this, we get a different error. The problem is Power Query is trying to rename every column in the old name list with a column in the new name list, but all of the columns in the old name list don't exist. Let's come back to our query. And now we're going to add an optional argument. In our table dot rename columns function before the closing bracket, we're going to enter a comma. And there you can see we have an argument called missing field. I'll start typing missing and we can see some options. We have missing field dot error, missing field dot ignore and missing field dot use null. In this scenario, we're going to use missing field dot ignore. And now when we commit that, we don't get any errors. As before, we've got our item, region and value columns. We'll come to transform, transform those data types. And now let's see what happens if our column name changes. I'll click on the gear icon and we're going to edit our column name. And we're going to give this the Italian version of sales for January in 2026. I'll click OK. There are no problems. And now as we click through our applied steps, everything continues to work. And that's it. That is four ways that we can rename columns. So no matter your scenario, you will be able to take control of column names. If you like this video, then why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. And once you've done that, why not check out this video next? I think it's another one you'll really enjoy. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.